G'day ladies and gents, just a quick announcement before we go to the actual video. Uh, Stoner, the community management, has announced that the dev server will be open at 1900 GMT on the 3rd of March and closing the 4th of March 700 GMT, which means that you have a little bit of a window there to update your dev server clients if you're on PC. Uh, and of course, if you're not on the dev server or if you don't have a dev server client, you can download it from the link in the description. I highly encourage you to go to the dev server to try out some stuff, try out some new maps, and maybe unlock some of the new content it is a five times bonus. Um, obviously, it doesn't transfer to your live server account, but it does give Gaijin some valuable information that they can use for testing and bug fixing. This is really important because this is the way that a dev server comes to the live server as bug free as possible. So if you guys can come with me and test, text, text, test that, that would be amazing. I don't know if I'm going to be live with any content, but I'm going to try and make something for the dev server at least. Anyway, roll with the video. Enjoy. Thank you very much. G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at what is probably the most poorly balanced plane in the game. But before we do that, I'd just like to thank everyone once again for being okay with me taking sponsors. Those two little sponsorship videos that I did a little bit, uh, I guess a while back towards the end of February really helped to sort of time me over financially, uh, especially as uh, I've been going through a couple of things that you can understand if you follow my Twitter. Um, but for those of you that are sort of wondering what I'm going to do with the money that I have left over, I plan to basically upgrade a couple of things. So I want to make, uh, not make, I want to buy a better mic, uh, and that is the Shure SM7B, which is 800 Australian dollars at the moment, which comes to about uh, I think it's like 600 US dollars. It is a very expensive microphone, but it is literally like the best the money can buy. Uh, and it also is uh, pretty good, I'm told, with the GoXLR mixer, which is what I've currently got as my audio mixer. So for those of you that are sort of uh, looking at a little bit of an upgrade to the sound quality, uh, then you can hopefully look forward to an SM7B once I scrape together a little bit of spare uh, money to play around with. Other than that, I would like to get a new mic stand because this one is currently rusting and it, it just happens with this cheap mic stand. It, it's just the way it is. But anyway, those of you that support me on, uh, I guess, on Patreon, I, I have a Patreon, but I don't really like to promote it. But if you really want to give me something every month, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to. And I, for this reason, I don't like the, the concept of Patreon. But if someone really wants to do it, it's there. If someone wants to buy, you know, merch, air models, anything like that, and you want the product, I would highly recommend that you do so. So thank you very much for those that uh, are supporting the channel in that way. For those of you that can't afford it, just watching and commenting and liking the video and feeding the algorithm is more than enough. Anyway, with that over and done with, we're having a look today at what is probably, without a shred of a doubt, the most poorly balanced plane in the game. This is the CW21, and as you can see, I'm already at 3,000 meters. My lord, this thing is 2.0, and I'm in basically a full up tier. I, th I think I'm in a full up tier, actually, because there's a PBM Mariner, and I'm pretty sure that thing is 3.0. Um, there are also plenty of Corsairs, Sunderlands. Uh, there is a MiG-3, which can supposedly outdo me in, in plenty of ways, yet I'm, I'm there above him. Now the MiG-3 does have a decent climb rate, but uh, the CW-21 has an excellent climb rate. I don't know what's with it. This thing must be so damn light for it to have this characteristic. It just seems to do everything perfectly for its battle rating. And for me, that's a little bit wrong. This plane should have some sort of weakness, and especially at this low tier, if someone with the experience that I have comes back to low tier, which we've discussed in previous videos, namely the Heinkel 100D videos, where I inadvertently realized that I was literally clubbing people who had played less than two or three games of Air RB. For me, that is a little bit of an issue in itself, and I have discussed that. I think that there should be a matchmaker specifically for people who have played their first 10 RRB games, who are within their first 50, say, they should be playing against bots. They should not be playing against players in the main pool because imagine playing your first game of RRB and you get ripped to shreds by a CW21 with literally 35,000 matches of experience. I think that's wrong. I think that's very wrong. 
uh, and we're going to be seeing part one of wrong right here. There is an AFK climbing P36A, and I'm going to start spraying it down with a 50 cal and a uh, 30 cal. That's all you need at this tier. The guns are plenty. They might not seem like a lot, but I've set this guy on fire with a short burst, and these planes are not very durable at all. There's a Beaufort there, but I'm going to be ignoring the Beaufort. Instead, I'm going to be going for the fighter because he's the one that is threatening my MiG-3. This J-22 has decided to stall for the MiG-3, so I'm going to really quickly destroy him. And now I notice that I'm getting to a little bit of a uh, very high top speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll over the top to try and conserve a little bit of that energy. But look how well it retains energy in a turn. I only dropped 200 kilometers per hour, which is uh, granted a fair amount. But it's still a, not a lot compared to what it could have been. I, I was expecting to be at 350 kilometers per hour, 300 kilometers per hour, and I'm still maintaining speed in all of this. The J20 gets crit. I kill that J22. There's a Corsair that's too far away for me to even bother about, and this allows me to just helicopter up and get some altitude. There's that J20 right behind me because I lost him, and the I-16 manages to quickly snipe him out and uh, fill him full of lead. That was a pretty good bait, and uh, honestly, not, not too bad. So, who's our next victim here? It is the J-22. Now, the J-22 is basically uh, guns on an aircraft. Guns, guns with wings, if you will. The CW-21 is an engine with wings. And engine with wing beats guns with wings every single time. And that's exactly what's going to happen here, because the J-22 isn't targeting the most valuable target here, the CW-21, which, you know, flown by me. The J-22 then gets set on fire, which to me honestly isn't very surprising, but you can see he's trying to give a little bit of a last hurrah, but it's not going to work. The CW-21 is just too maneuverable, accelerates too well, and the guns are sufficient for its tier. You don't need 450 cals. In fact, you only need the one, and that's exactly what I have here, and that's all I need. I've managed to get four kills with 400 rounds. Not that bad for a 50 caliber machine gun. The Corsair here is going to be my tough target, however. This is a 2.7 aircraft, and it really should be 3.3, because the USMC Corsair is 3.3, and it performs basically the same way. But uh, this is basically where I'm going to be meeting my match. I can't really take out the uh, Corsair with my 30 cals, and you'll sort of start to see that. I'm spraying a little bit. I'm not really sure where I'm going. I am using stealth on the 30 cal, so it doesn't mess up my 50 cal aim. Um, but this is really biting me in the ass over here, and I'm not used to the 30 cals. I haven't flown a plane with 30 cals since I made the Hunker 100 video way back in 2020. I think it was about September 2020 or October 2020. I'm not really sure, but it was a fairly long time ago, relatively speaking, of War Thunder. And considering that I play a lot of jets, uh, the, the aim right here is really throwing me off. But this guy's smoking or leaking oil and it's really not looking good for him. If I had a little bit more ammo, I would have very, very easily managed to take him out without any of a problem. You see, the CW-21 is just able to sort of sit behind him, especially when he's this damaged. It's pretty much game over, provided that I can land the hits, and he's sort of like flying around a little bit, doing a couple of weird things, but I just can't manage to get my guns on in an appropriate way and do any meaningful damage. So I'm getting too close to the airfield, I run out of ammo, so I decide it's best to bugger off and go back to my uh, airfield, rearm, repair, and then I'll have enough ammo for the next four guys, or the next five guys, maybe. I could get myself nine kills here. Spoiler alert, it doesn't happen, but the point being is that the CW21 is capable of getting as many kills as you can possibly get. 500 rounds in the, in the, in the 50 cal is absolutely plenty. It's so much ammunition for 2.0, and in fact, at 3.0, you would probably be happy with 250 cals, provided that they're mounted properly. And this one's mounted in the nose, which makes it a little bit easier to, uh, a little bit easier to aim. And speaking of aiming, we are going to be testing this aiming on a little Beaufort who's uh, come back from a little bombing run. Now, I don't really normally go for a low-flying bomber because they're pretty low-value targets, especially when there's a Corsair sitting around. But I thought maybe this is going to be the best way to lure the Corsair out. And um, it, it kind of works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come from the back, which is pretty stupid. But if I don't spend too much time and get the pilot like I do here, well, I've got a pretty easy time. The pilot here, I don't, I don't know how I got him. 
But what I should have ideally done is come from the sort of side at uh, a bit of a level spot. Um, basically trying to outsmart his gunners or get in the dead zone of his gunners where they're not really going to be as effective. Uh, I know the Beaufort from the front has... I think he's got a couple of gunners in the front. Uh, I'm not sure if he's got any on the on the rear, but I don't really know it well enough. I just thought if I'm going to go for a, for a bomber, I'm going to go and spend as little time as possible. One sweep, one pass, and that's it. And that's exactly what I did, because the CW21 is just that capable. Anyway, our next target here is a Sunderland that is on the airfield, and he's just taken off big big booty boat, I don't know what to call it, but it's, it's a big chonky thing. So what I need to do here is lure it away from its airfield AA because as you'll see in, a, in an upcoming video, uh, airfield campers not very fun to deal with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go head on, try and snipe his pilot, and then I realize he's starting to turn and just as I realize that he's coming in for me, just as I hit his pilot, I start to move out of the way because if you sit in the head on of a Sunderland, they do have four forward facing 30 cals and they can make men's meat out of you. So once that's done, I'm going to start climbing because I notice the F4U, the F4U becomes spotted just after I pilot snipe the uh, good old, the Sunderland, the big, the big flying booty boat. So what I do is I instruct my teammates to get some altitude because if this guy is going to be a pain in the ass, he's easily going to sit at his altitude over his airfield AA and there's not a whole lot that we can do about it and climbing is one of the very things that we can do to scare him down and once we do that then we could just swarm him with numbers so I you know, out of uh, sort of fear of being a bit uh, of, a, of a know all or a bit of a show off or a bit of someone who, who knows more than or who knows less than they per perceive to know um, I asked this guy if he's got any experience and he said barely any and then he hit me again this is 2.0 these people have been playing air rb for maybe a week at the very very most this this feels so wrong the corsair is on fire he's heading towards me but uh he, he hasn't got long he can shoot but he's never gonna hit but the cw21 is the ultimate machine to drive people away from the match this q was 40 seconds a minute something like that that's a pretty long time that's a pretty long time for a queue and i suppose that the club fest that newer players are experiencing has something to do with older players coming back and things like this anyway ladies and gents thank you very much for watching the dev server should be open sometime around soon so update your clients make sure you do that take care thank you for supporting me and I'll catch you next time.